Good morning, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, please. I'd like us to start by looking at just one verse. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Now that is a twofold thing. You and I, Church of the Living God, brother, sister, at the judgment seat of Christ, we are going to give an account of ourself to God to receive the things done in our body, whether they be good or whether they be evil. You lost people at the great white throne of judgment. You are going to give an account of yourself to God. We are all going to give account of ourself to God. Where are you going to do it though? At the judgment seat of Christ? Which is for those who are saved? Of the church of the living God, his body? Or at the great white throne? Which one is it going to be? Now, you know, is the best time for you to be broken of yourself and to call upon the name of the Lord. Believe on Him, you know, for what He did for you. For Him to save you. But see, once the redemption of the purchased possession happens, the catching away, oh, things are going to change. But every one of us, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. And in context, of course, uh, in Romans chapter 14, um, he's talking on to who? The church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. And brethren, we are called to be separate, other than, separate than. That. And that also involves that also involves those whom we call our family. This video is actually kind of a response onto a beautiful, very heartfelt and personal email that I got from a beloved brother. Um, this morning I, I uh, answered an email or two already, but this one specifically, and you will know who you are. I'm not going to say your name uh, out of courtesy, but also you, you don't want some of these devils coming after you. <laughs> you don't. They, you talk about a grievous burr under the saddle. But um, this is for a brother, uh, or in response to a brother, uh, to a very beautiful, heartfelt email that just... Oh. So, turn in your authorized version to Psalm 27. You know, when you look in the scriptures about this thing of family, okay, you, you look in the very beginning of the scriptures, um, the very first family ever in the history of all mankind was Cain and Abel. And <laughs> Cain slew Abel out of what? Jealousy. So the very first family in the history of mankind, there was murder over what? Jealousy. Yeah. Yeah. And we hear a, a whole lot that nothing is more important than family. Well, what is that family? 
define that family. Is it the family merely of your flesh? Or is it your family that hath in common one Father, our Lord Jesus Christ? You get what I'm saying? Psalm 27. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Now today we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost, the Lord, is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? So, when you look at verse 4, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, Remember what it says in Corinthians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21, I believe it is. That Christ liveth in me, yet I live, yet not I. Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in you. Try to remember that the next time you choose to set wicked things before your eyes to allow your ears to hear some things that you shouldn't verse 5 for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me upon a rock And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Note that it says, My heart said unto thee. Not his head, his heart. See, the Lord looketh upon the heart. For someone to say, Well, the Lord knows my heart. Yeah, of course he does. Yes, he does. And yes, the Lord knows everybody's heart. But see, that knowing defined the knowing. Knowing as through a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with the living God. Or is it a knowing just that you got up here in your head? Is it up here? Or is that knowing here through a relationship? I don't trust anybody who claims to be of the church of the living God and doesn't pray. Nor should you. Nor should you. Because like the late Leonard Ravenhill said, and yes, Leonard Ravenhill had a lot of issues. 
No man is greater than his prayer life. What is prayer like unto you? What is prayer like unto you? Is it a mechanical thing where it's like, okay, okay, I gotta spend this much time in prayer and then go off and, oh, no, 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 you're, you're missing it there, brother, sister. What is prayer to you? See, you got people who say prayer is a work. Hence, their relations, their so-called relationship is all here. Nothing here. And they will claim, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. And it's desperately wicked. Yes, the Lord knows everybody's heart. That it's desperately wicked. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10, I believe that is. Go look that up on your own time. The knowing is a personal relationship with him. With a living person. Spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. So when it says here, When thou saidest, Seek ye, plural, my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Not his head, his heart. For God looketh on the heart. At the end of the day, it is an issue of the heart. And those who just believe that just believe doesn't transcend down to the heart. Prove me wrong. No, no, you're right. Forgive me for that, brother. Prove the scriptures wrong. Tough guy. Verse 9, hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Now, up to verse 10, up unto verse 10, look at those verses. In just going to the Lord in prayer, putting everything upon him. Psalm 27 puts the Lord first. In everything. See, we know that, right? But do we do that? See, we know that in all things, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, needs to be the number one. We know that. Some of us even say that it is so, but is it? How do you know? Why don't you ask him sometime? Why don't you have um why don't you have the fortitude? To sear to Lord shoo me my sin. Lord humble me. Lord, humble me. Keep me humble. Kick my feet out from underneath me. When my pride, when I allowed my pride to get into your way. Verse 10 is the turning point in the psalm. Virtually every psalm has a turning point at some time within the psalm itself. And you'll see that when you study the Psalms. A, a shift in direction or attention. 
When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Because your enemies watch you. And just salivate over any misstep you may take and any little chink in your precious armor. Oh, they're going to shine a spotlight on that on you, ain't they? Try to blow it out of proportion and to make a molehill into a Mount Everest. <laughs> That's what devils do. Deliver me not over to the will of mine enemies. Uh, excuse me. Deliver me not over onto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses, hello, <laughs> are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. So you stand upon the scriptures. You stand for our Lord Jesus Christ. Brother. That's going to happen. And it hurts worse, especially when it is those of your own family. But what do, you, what do you choose? Who is more important? The Lord? Or your immediate family? And see, you read up on uh, Catholicism. <laughs> they, they try to tell you the family comes first. Yeah. Yeah. They lie. See, Catholicism wants to bring everybody under their control. And once we, the Church of the Living God, are taken out of the way, guess what? Catholicism, the devil... It's going to be in control. It's going to be given that from the Lord, of course. Because he who now letteth will, will let will be taken out of the way. The church of the living God. The ground and pillar of the truth. Verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Oh, I know of many of you who have so many brutal issues within your immediate family. I think of one who um, we pray daily that the Lord will deliver that one out of that environment and place that one in a safe environment away from what that person goes through. You know who you are and you are prayed for every day. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. We will be reading verses 32 on to verse 39 in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 on to verse 39. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Now we have to remember that doctrinally and dispensationally, this is still under the law. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? This is when he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. 
But let's let's get a little instruction in righteousness in this, okay? Turn to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter two, verses eight, on to verse sixteen. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David, meaning King of the Jews, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. Now that elect is not the Calvinistic elect and non-elect, okay? God has elected the way of the cross. And to be right with the Lord, you go to him by the cross, okay? You have to go to the cross, all right? And once you come to our Lord, broken, contrite. Believe on him what he did for you, knowing that you ain't good, you ain't worth it, and you deserve to go to hell, and you are trusting on him for what he did for you. And in that brokenness, you will call upon him. It just happens. Okay? Hence, when he saves you, you are part of that elect meaning that he has elected the way of the cross. Okay? The Lord thy God will. Okay? This is an incident, as defined by the context, that elect also refers on to the church of the living God. Okay? Both, which is comprised of Jew and Gentile. Let's continue. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Now hold on. Now hold on. Okay? Doctrinally and dispensationally, in Matthew chapter 10, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Here in 2 Timothy, this is this dispensation doctrine specifically for us today in the time of, of the Gentiles. Now look at that. Okay? It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead with him. What does that mean? Dead unto this world. Dead unto the flesh. Okay? Dead unto this world. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And I am crucified unto the world. Okay? To be separate. Holy, other than, okay? If, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Live with him how? The kingdom of heaven. Okay? Our kingdom of heaven inheritance. Okay? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Aha, see? Reign with him? Okay, live with him and reign with him. Okay? Live with him and reign with him. Reign with him where? The kingdom of heaven. Okay? But the suffering, the suffering is tied to verse 11, for if we be dead with him. Because remember, do not count it as a strange thing as the fiery trial that is to try you. As when you, as the church of the living God, refuse to conform onto those things out there in the world, they look at you as if you're strange. That's in Peter. Go find it. Okay? 
What about when that comes from your own family? When the persecution comes close to you at home, from your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. That's, that's an exquisite suffering, isn't it? Isn't it? But see, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer in being dead with him, dead unto the world, not conforming, we shall reign with him. We shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. Now that's not talking as pertaining unto our salvation. Okay? Because in Ephesians, look this up on your own time, we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. You're going to heaven whether you like it or not. Okay? If you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you're going to heaven. Okay? You are. How do we deny him today? Well, look at Peter. He was identified with Christ. It's like, weren't you one of them Galileans, right? You're one of them Galileans. You was with him. You was with him. It's like, no, I wasn't. He denied Christ three times. And then you read in Luke how the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Oh, brother, sister, 13 years saved, almost 13 years saved and converted. I, I, I still to that day in uh, Luke, when it says that the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, that still brings a tear to my eye. does but how do we deny him by conforming by not, by not taking heed thereto according to his word compromising giving in for unity's sake unity is not based upon truth In the eyes of the world. Unity. <laughs> unity is not based on absolute truth. I should say. According to the world. No. No. But we who are of the church of the living God. The ground and pillar of the truth. You deny him by conforming. You deny him by not taking up the sword of the spirit by not putting on the full armor of God by compromising a little here a little there for unity with your family think about that and if you deny him he'll deny you in what ways Maybe he won't protect you from certain things. Maybe he'll bring the recompense upon you that he withheld from you because you were disobedient and denying him. Hmm? I'm not talking about your salvation. It's not, nothing to do with your salvation. You can lose, if you deny him, you can lose your testimony. You can lose your peace. You can lose your health. You can definitely lose your joy. There's a whole lot of stuff you can lose. You will not lose your salvation. What happens when you deny him? And compromise. Especially in the sight of the lost. Hmm? Think about that. And verse 13 if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Meaning, we are his bones 
and his flesh. If you're saved of the church of the living God, born again, converted, Christ liveth within you. You are his. He owns you. And he will not deny himself. He cannot deny himself. If we believe not yet as he abideth faithful. Have you ever in your life, dear brother or sister, been like, I know God can do this, but will he do it? Tell me you've, ever, you've never been there, right? I know that the Lord can provide for my need. We know that, right? Do we know that? But it says here, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Again, that has nothing to do with your salvation. Nothing to do with your salvation. But everything to do with your walk with him. I run into this all the time. It's like, yeah, I know the Lord can provide for my needs, but shh. Shush, get the butt out. You know, he saith in the scripture that he will withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly. How do you walk uprightly? According to the scriptures. Okay? That's how you walk uprightly. According to the scriptures. And in you walking uprightly is going to offend a lot of people, including those of your own kindred. No, how many of you know what I'm talking about, right? Let's continue. Of these things, put them in remembrance from verse 14, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting to the hearers. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth the canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, of who, who concerning the truth have erred, saying the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. See, we are commanded to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, that we be workmen who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the scriptures within their proper dispensations. Okay? Okay? But looking up, that leads up to verse 15, okay? Looking up to that. I know we read on to verse 18. I, I know that. When I said verse 16, I know, but bear with me, okay? We study to show ourselves approved unto God. And in studying the scriptures, we learn how to live our lives in accordance with the scriptures. And that offends people. What do you choose, brother? Go back to Matthew chapter 10 now. Verses 34 on to verse 36. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And see, you got Catholics saying bringing all Christians together. And our Lord Jesus Christ, what, he says what? Think not that I am come to send peace on, on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. What happens when a sword hits something? One thing goes over here, one goes in the other direction. It divides, right? 
For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. You know, a lot, a lot of times, even in this Cambridge, Micah chapter 7 is not listed as a reference. I don't know why. Micah chapter 7, verses 5 on to verse 7. Micah chapter 7, verses 5 on to verse 7. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Look at verse 7. Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. <laughs> you made me. Uh, you made me cry with that email, brother. We love you, and we're praying for you. Bless your heart and sweet soul. Timothy chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 18. Okay? Now, looking back at Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 on to verse 36 again. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and against um, variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 18. You know, in Romans chapter 16, Paul has a big thank you list. And pretty much his ministerial team consisted of what? Four or five guys, maybe? Okay, Silas, Timothy, Luke, uh, Aquila and Priscilla, that kind of stuff. Okay? Not too many people in his own little unit, you know, of those he was directly, you know, tied with. Verse 10 on to verse 18 in 2 Timothy chapter 4. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto, unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. A brother is, for, is born for adversity, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. If you happen to have a brother who is also a friend, what a, what a privilege that is. But the instruction is, only Luke is with me. After all these people, only Luke is with me. And remember Mark, that he and Barnabas had the big to-do about and they went their separate ways over a doctrinal issue. That very Mark. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. So back then in the book of Acts, I believe that was Acts 13, um, where Mark departed from them. And then in Acts 15, he and Barnabas uh, had such a sharp contention over Mark 
that they went asunder. But yet, Paul says, take Mark. And he says, for he is profitable for me for the ministry. That's interesting, isn't it? Verse 12. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Where was that? Yeah. Verse 12. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. <laughs> R-H-S-J <laughs> did me much evil. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. That loneliness you feel when you stand for the Lord, when you stand for the truth of Scripture. Like what Moses did, you know, when he went on to Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. And Pharaoh, instead of dealing with that truth, turned it and went on the offensive against Moses. Like, ye are idle, ye are idle. And Moses like, Lord, ever since I spake in your name, that they've gone ballistic berserk on me. I pray God that it might that it may not be laid to their charge. And, and right there, verse 17, brother, sister. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Verse 17 again. Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me. Again, I know so many out there deal with loneliness. Even those of you who have spouses. I, I can't imagine what it must be like for some, of, for some out there who are of the church of the living God and live with lost spouses. I, I, <sighs> you youngins out there, you're saved, but your whole family, your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers, aren't. And they persecute you in your own house because of your faith and trust on our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The weight of the world is on your shoulders, right? Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Why? that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And also remember, dear brethren, what we read in Romans chapter 14, verse 12. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. At the judgment seat of Christ, I can't hold Susan's hand. She cannot hold my hand. 
But every one of us, by ourselves, are given, going to give an account unto God. And all have forsaken you right now, right? Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I am crucified unto the world. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and died for me. Like, I, like I've told several of you, I can't get away from that verse. From that verse in Galatians, I just can't get away from it lately. I just can't get away from it. Second, uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. God lives within you. Don't forget that. Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 and verse 38. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Christ, above all else, needs to be our number one. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. What is that? Luke chapter 14, verses 25 on to verse 33. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father. Now that means, that does not mean that you literally hate your father. Okay? That doesn't mean that. No. What that means is that you put him above the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is jealous like that. He wants you to be subservient unto him. He wants you to put him first. He died on that cross because of your sins. Do we not owe him at the very least For him to be the number one thing in our lives? If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now the instruction righteousness is here quite plainly. Nothing can get in between us and our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And if something is getting in the way of that, that needs to be put away. I know people out there who make their children idols. They're their own little idols. They try to live vicariously through their children. Hence, puffing these little darlings up. <laughs> what, 
Why do you think one of the most harshest judgments in Scripture was that the Lord um, allowed the apple of his eye to eat their own children, to divide, to go into cannibalism? Hmm? Why do you think? Why do you think that was so? Maybe because they made of their children idols, as they do here. Everything is for the children, right? But yet. The Jesuits are poisoning the children, literally, and also up here, also this kind of stuff, right? And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. crucified with Christ dead unto this world and as we saw in Psalm 27 when my mother and father forsake me then the Lord will take me up that's a hard thing isn't it but that's what our Lord expects. And is he not right for him to expect that of us, his children, whom he owns? He never said it was going to be easy. But I think it's worth it, don't you? For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? See, a lot of people say, I believe. Okay? And then a little persecution comes, then they fall back. Look at that putz, uh, Brian Welch. Okay? Again, uh, it, you know, people thought that guy was actually of the Church of Living God. No, he was a Christian. Yeah, he was a Christian. Yeah, yeah. Just believe. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. But how many people do you know, they say, oh, I believe, I believe, right? Oh, I, oh yeah, I believe the facts. Here, not here, of course. Yeah. What happens? They get a little push, and they whimper. The world puts a standard on them. You conform, or it's going to cost you. That's what it means by counting the cost. Paul said that he counted everything as dung that he may win Christ, not as to gain his salvation. No. To know him. It's going to cost you everything. It's going to cost you. Are you prepared for that? It ain't easy. But it's worth it. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation. And is not able to finish it. All that behold. It began, begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Think about that. Oh, you say you're a Christian, huh? And look at you. Look at you. You look just like one of us. You're, you're a Christian, huh? Yeah, a Christian, huh? How many, I'm keeping track, how many F-bombs have I heard out of you under five minutes? Huh? How many... Grotesque innuendos have you mentioned in your jesting? You're a Christian, huh? You're a Christian. Yeah. 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 I bet you are a Christian. But nothing to do with the church of the living God. Are we walking 
our talk. And do we have the guts to go to the Lord to reveal to us when we are not and implore him to chasten us that we may? Oh. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace? So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Verse 33, he just explains verses 28 on to verse 32. He explains what he was talking about. And keep your eyes upon Jesus. Through the example given to us for us today through Paul, who counted everything as done and put him first. And that means above your father and mother, above your wife, above your precious children, above your brothers and sisters, and yes, even your own life. The Lord is with you, brother. You know that. Don't you ever forget it. Go back now to Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. You findeth your life out there in things of the world, compromising. What does that say? He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Again, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. Go to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Simply put, verses 36 on to verse 38. Mark chapter 8. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Like Satan said unto God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. You know, our Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. Okay? What he said to him. All this has been given to me, and I'll give this all unto you. If you bow down and worship me, all shall be thine. Verse 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words... In this adulterous and sinful generation. Now, doctrinally and dispensationally, speaking of that actual generation right there before the crucifixion. A little, 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 little instruction in righteousness for us. Hello? See, compromise is the modus operandi right now. Right? <laughs> for the common good, which is Catholic teaching. For the common good. And to get that passport thing. That says here see. I've been vaccinated. Some of the information I've been given. Recently on that. I'm being kept in the loop by the way. That's good. Um, it's just so appalling. Oh. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words. Where are his words? Right here. Uh, 
Are you ashamed of him and his words? Huh? No, you're not. Then why are you compromising sometimes? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. You live a life of compromise as the church of the living God. And then you mess around with sin so bad that he has to kill you, that your spirit, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Again, at the judgment seat of Christ, when you get up there, he looks at you. Just, just go. Yeah, 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 I bought you. This is how you give me the slightest thanks. Yeah, yeah, just get in there. If you had a tenth of the fear of the Lord in you, some of you wouldn't do what you're doing. And sometimes he may bring you close to death. And hopefully that will wake some of you up. Mark chapter 10. Verses 28 on to verse 31. Now, remember, the disciples, they, they forsook all, right? He, they forsook all. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, and the Gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now, in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecution. And in the world to come, eternal life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And verse 31 is referring on to when the Jews finally are broken, and they accept the Lord Jesus Christ in the time of Jacob's trouble. But right here, the contrast, okay? You give up one thing that is of the world. You leave all of that of the, that is of the world behind you. And you will gain of your brethren, who we have the same Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? You will receive houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. You give up one that you may live for the other. And right there in verse 30, it's talking about once you give up that and you live according to this. Oh boy. All things are yours. But the world is going to hate you. That includes those of your own family. Stay strong in our Lord Jesus Christ. Put him first in all things. You know why? Go to Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. Verses 10 on to verse 13. Fear thou not, 
for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. All men forsook you, yet the Lord stood by you and will stand by you. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. In Isaiah chapter 49, verses 13 on to verse 17. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. And remember, we, as the Gentile, have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. And what's our comfort? The blessed hope. The redemption of the purchased possession. To be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. They'll go forth of thee. Meaning, they went out from us, but never were of us. And also, too, brethren, you got to remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Verses 46 on to verse 50. Catholics like to tell you that Jesus never said no to his mother. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak to him. Yes, Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, had brothers. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. See, you and I, brother, sister of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth, we are connected together 
by the blood of Jesus Christ. We belong to God our Father. We are his purchased possession. Okay? Hence, the true family of God is the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. And it says here, For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. If we deny him, he will deny us. Today, we're eternally secure. What kind of rewards are you going to lose for conforming to that and being more afraid of reproach from your family rather than to hear, well done, good and faithful servant? Which one are you going to choose? Stay strong in that. Because like, uh, like it says in the book of John, where our Lord says, Martha, Martha, thou, thou art, very, art careful and troubled about many things, but only one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that part, and that will not be taken away from her. You go find that. That's in the book of John. I just paraphrase that. Excuse me. There's only one thing that is needful. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he will sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Live your life in accordance to the scriptures. Live your life in accordance to the Pauline epistles, which is doctrine specifically for us today in this dispensation. But don't cast off the entirety of Scripture for our instruction in righteousness. You would hear your life according to this book. Oh, it's going to cost you. It's going to be worth it. Don't quit! Don't make excuses. Who makes excuses? It's going to be it for this uh, short video. Um, there may be one tomorrow. I do not know. Um, this coming weekend, brethren, I am going to be a little busy. Um, I have some information coming, some books. Uh, there's, Lord willing... Uh, there's going to be a rather big video coming here in the very near future um, on the on Jesuitism and Catholicism. They're one and the same. Uh, the Lord wants me to to do a video on this, and I got some books. I ordered some books because I'm old fashioned. I mean, I love the links. It keeps me in the loop, but you know, for deep, deep, intense study of stuff like that i need books i need books so but um there may be a video tomorrow i do not know uh, that's up to our lord but um over this course of the, this weekend I'm going to be pretty busy so please keep us in your prayers as we pray for so many of you and on to you brother who sent me that beautiful heartfelt email we love you so very much Thank you. And we are praying for you. You ain't alone. You ain't alone. And um, I'm going to email you back, but I wanted to make this video um, for you, you know, and for also for the rest of the Church of the Living God. But I do plan on emailing you uh, to give you my phone number if you wish to contact uh, us and talk, um, you know, Verbally, you know, one to another. Like I've given, I've given my phone number out to actually quite a few people. Uh, not every one of you call me like I, uh, like I hope you would. <laughs> but uh, my number is there. 
for those to whom I trust and, you know, so. Anyway, I love you. My wife loves you. Uh, we are praying for lots of you, many of you. And pray for one another. Pray for our humility in these days. That we may be humble. Ever, ever search the scriptures and examine yourselves in the scriptures. Hi. And if there is anything of in you that is thus minded, our Lord will reveal that unto you. If you just have the courage to ask him. Thank you. We love you. And we will see you in the next video, whenever that will be. Bye-bye.